Good afternoon, ladies. This is Erin Harrison from Keeper of the Homestead and my lovely co-host, Nancy Campbell from Above Rubies. And we are here today to continue our lessons on the Proverbs 31 woman. And we've been going through chapter by chapter in my book and kind of going over some fun points and tips. And today, what's the verse? It's verse 13, isn't it? Mm -hmm. She worketh willingly, willingly with, with her, her hands. hands. Yes, <laughs> I remember one night at Shabbat because each Friday night um, as a family we celebrate Shabbat not because we are Jewish or not because we are Sabbath keepers. We do it because it's such a beautiful family meal where the husband blesses his wife and blesses his children. And at the beginning of the meal, he reads Proverbs 31. So it's interesting when my husband reads Proverbs 31, isn't it? It's like his own version. I know. <laughs> he comes out with all kinds of funny things. And little tricks. Oh, yes, yes. And then <laughs> he gets to, she's dressed in silk and purple. And he always goes, yeah, she's not wearing boring denim and <laughs> or sackcloth and yeah. ashes. <laughs> but anyway, um, he got to that verse, she worketh willingly. And, and he, he just kept saying, he said, she worketh willingly, willingly, willingly with her hands. Mm -hmm. And it was interesting when he said it three times it really got into me actually because you can we all know that scripture don't we she worketh willingly with her hands but sometimes we don't take time to take it in that made me take it in in fact since then i've checked out the hebrew word um, i can give that to you because i've written it down here um, it is chef or however you pronounce it. I don't always pronounce the Hebrew words correctly, so please forgive me. Um, the spelling in English, um, not Hebrew, in English is C-H-E-P-H-E-T-S. But this is what it means. Okay, it means to work with pleasure. Isn't oh, that that's so good? nice. Yes, I love that. love that. It's not just, you know how when you can think, work willingly with your hands. Okay, well, I guess I better scrub this floor willingly. I guess I better <laughs> do not this like that willingly. And really, you're sort of not really very willing inside. No, you're really you not. Know? <laughs> and, um, but the real meaning of the word lovely ladies is to do it with pleasure. Mm -hmm. You're going to love doing it. And with desire, with delight, and with purpose. Mm -hmm. So isn't that lovely? Um, so that means whatever we are doing in our home, whatever, mm -hmm. whether it's some amazing thing or some just little boring thing, we're still going to do it with delight. Yes. And with pleasure. I love that. I think that. that's an amazing thing when we can get to that place when we can look upon everything, even the little things, even the boring things, even the, you know, mundane things and the things we have to do over and over again every day and the things we'd rather not do, to do them with delight and with pleasure. And then they're no longer a boring task. They're no longer menial. They are amazing. And because it is true that everything that we do when we are born again, when Christ dwells in us, everything we do is sacred. It really is. It's not just a delight and it's not just a pleasure. It's sacred. Yes. Oh, yes. I know. So, lovely ladies, is there <laughs> anything you groaned about today? You know, grumble that you had to do this and oh, poor me. But we've got to change our attitude. We do. To do it willingly, mm -hmm. with pleasure, with delight. And knowing that it's sacred. Yes, every time you change a diaper, it's a sacred work. You know, we think so many things, oh, I could be out doing something more powerful. No, you couldn't. You couldn't be doing anything more sacred. No matter, even if you're out preaching in a to thousands, no, <laughs> because everything is sacred when Christ dwells in us. What do you reckon about oh, that? It's the truth. I really, mm. truly believe that. For six years of my life, I was really disabled. Yeah. I couldn't do so many things. And this winter, I was a little bit 
I couldn't do as much. And it makes you really appreciate the ability to mm -hmm. be able to wash dishes or cook meals. And I have a different perspective than a lot of people do because yeah. I, I wanted to be useful and I wanted to be able to be in my role and help and be able to serve my family. And I couldn't for a while. Yeah. It was hard for me. But I still found ways to work willingly. Sometimes I would scoot around on my wheelchair and I would have a broom in my hand and I would try to do those things. And when I was at my worst, I remember the one thing that made me feel like I accomplished something was just to be able to make my bed. And it took me a long time. I'd just hobble around and just, just try to get the blankets up and walk mm -hmm. around and put the pillows on. And if I could get that, that meant I wasn't laying in bed all day. Mm -hmm. pain. Amen. <laughs> oh, yes. But you know, you, you said something that, to, you know, you made an effort mm -hmm. to make your bed even when you were in a wheelchair. Yeah. Well, many folks can't even bother making their bed when they're totally able. Mm -hmm. And I think, maybe, see, there's another little thing that's just a very menial thing. But it I think is. it's an important thing, I, don't you? I do too. To make our beds uh -huh. every morning. When we get up, mm -hmm. we just make the bed. Yes, yeah, the bed is for sleeping. Yes. If you leave it unmade, well, are you kind of wanting to just get back into it or what? Right, exactly. I mean, it, the bed is for that beautiful nighttime. When you I know. Go to bed it's more inviting when you come home oh, yes. to a beautiful bed all oh, made I up. I love it. I love it. And of course, oh, I no. love it with my beautiful sheets yes. because I saved for years and years to buy linen sheets because they are so healthy for you. Linen is such a healthy fabric. Uh, linen and wool are the most healthy fabrics that you can use and wear on your body. And so I thought lying in, in bed all night, goodness me, I need to be lying in something that's healthy. And so I was saving and I was saving because they are more expensive than just popping down to Walmart and buying any old sheets. But then God was so good to me. And um, <laughs> one Christmas, was it a couple of years ago, maybe three now, I got this Christmas present. I opened it up and I simply could not believe it. It was linen sheets. Oh, well, your linen sheets. The dream of my life. And... It was the parents of one of my Above Ruby's helpers. And I don't know, somehow I must have <laughs> mentioned uh, along the line, along the way, that I loved linen sheets. And they bought this beautiful gift for me. Well, it's been the most beautiful gift of my life. My husband and I just adore coming to bed with our linen sheets. Now, they're not perfect sheets because they get all crinkly. Uh, they're not, you know, perfect. But... Oh, we love them. We feel so amazing in them. And, mm -hmm. oh, I love getting into bed. Not only with my linen sheets, but when I wash them and not put them in the dryer, but put them out in the sun to oh, dry, no. to Hang air, them out on the and line. to be just, oh, disinfectant and just freshened and mm -hmm. just made beautiful in the mm -hmm. sun. And then you bring them in and you put them on your oh, bed. That's so There's wonderful. nothing more dreamy in the whole of the world. No. I love it. It's so yes. nice. And uh, we, in fact, we were talking this morning at our breakfast table and uh, with my Above Ruby's girls who love to put everything in the dryer because that's what they're used to doing. And we had some visitors, like we've always got visitors. <laughs> and uh, this couple, um, this lady, the couple, the wife of the husband, she was also saying how she loves to put things out on the line. And, and um, I was saying, well, maybe when we pass on, because she was older too, there will be nobody in the next generations who even know that you ever used to put clothes on a line. Oh, I mean, yeah. even the new generation <laughs> now, like I will say to my girls living in my home, hey, why don't you pop your things out on the line? Um, it would save my power. <laughs> and it will be better for your clothes. Just look at all that lint you get yeah. out of them. It, it halves the length of your clothes. And... Oh, they're so much healthier. But no, it doesn't really entice them at all. And of course today, 
I, I know all my um, sons and daughters-in-law who live in the city, they live in, um, you know, communities where you are not allowed to hang clothes on the line. Really? It's, oh, yes. That's against the rules of, this, of the community <laughs> because they think it looks untidy. I actually think it's lovely. <laughs> well, Van still hangs out all her stuff yes, on the line. And, and yes. I did for years when we did the Amish... We just don't have a clothesline here yet, but we always hang it up on drying racks. My husband always made those yes. well, wooden I, drying I, racks. My, because Serene and Pearl know how I love clotheslines, they bought it, oh, I can't even count how many years ago. They bought us this oh. beautiful revolving clothesline, like we used to have in New Zealand, oh, where those things go round oh, yes. and round, because that's what we were used to all our lives. So you stand in the same place, basically? But, but you notice? What? You haven't seen it, have you? No. No. You know why? Why? Because Colin hasn't put it up yet. Oh no! <laughs> After you all these years, clothes? it's still in the box. So I hang all my clothes out on my deck every day. What do you do? On the deck, I hang on, on the my deck, deck. Over the deck? Just over the deck. Just over the deck. I'm still oh, longing yeah. for my clothes, like. But <laughs> if I can't get that, I still will hang them out. There you go. <laughs> I know mine is on this drying rack, and I just put them over like you mm. see the picture that I had. Up there. Yes. But it's so nice. But I, I do my got whole all load my bags there. of pegs and everything waiting for my clothesline. Waiting, line. For waiting, it. waiting. Maybe I should have maybe maybe we'll have a party some night, a clothesline yes. party <laughs> and we'll just get it up. Everybody can work together to get this thing put together. Yes. Team effort. Oh, but when when my children were little, I can remember we lived in Palmerston, North New Zealand, a very, very windy, windy city. Oh, goodness me, it was so windy. And if the wind was coming your way, you would have to bend right over to even be able to walk in it. And uh, so it dried the clothes so gloriously. They would flutter in the wind everywhere. Oh, I love that. But I can remember when I had the twins, and because I had little Wesley, he was only 17 months when the twins were born. But as they got a little mm -hmm. bit older and they could sit in their little seats, I had swings, and they would sit in this little seat. I would put one swing, one side of the revolving clothesline, and one the other side so it balanced. And I'd take them out with me, and they would twirl around as I hung up the clothes and twirl the next line around. They'd twirl around. And oh, that's, that's so it. fun. It's fun. Yeah, it is. It's, and, and yeah. when my grandmothers were um, just new mothers and all the way through, they always did wash on Mondays. And then when I lived among the Amish, I noticed that they still kept that mm. Monday was always That's wash day. That's we did it when we were growing up. That was yes. just what it was. Monday was always wash day exactly. for people. And my mother used to have to boil up the tub, you mm, know. Put the whites yes, in there. and then we and put them through the ringer. In fact, I had a ringer washer. Oh yeah, so did I. You did the too? Oh yes, oh, wow. yes. Right <laughs> up in fact until my first five babies I had all with washing and then putting all the nappies, the diapers that you say, here through the, the ringer. ringer. Oh, yes. didn't you love doing that? Oh. I found it really relaxing using the ringer, ringer washer, but that was the one thing my husband and I had a fight over. Yeah. Because... <laughs> Why was that? <laughs> well, well, I thought that this was like a dream come true, and while we were Amish, I used this ringer washer every Monday because I didn't want to be different. I'd have all my clothes snapping in the wind every Monday, and I was very disabled, so I would sit there on a chair beside the ringer washer, and I would send it all through, and I was, I just loved it. I had it all set up. My whites went last, or my whites went first, mm -hmm. and then my dish towels, and then my mm -hmm. towels, and then I had... That's how we did it. Yeah. In fact, we never threw everything all at once. No. Ooh. I had it all organized I by colors. today, I would and never... Put a towel in with no, anything else. No. I had my towel Towels wash. with the sheets. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> well, in the ringer wash, you can't put as much in there. So the Amish lady would tell me exactly how to do it and how much to put in a basket mm. so that you knew how to separate your laundry. And then I had a special um, Rubbermaid tub that I would put all the, um, the jeans that mm. my husband would wear for working out in the field with the farm work mm. and they would have all dirt all over it, and the little boys and they'd be playing dirt all day so he'd have that pre-soaking in there and I would wring it out before I put it into the wash water so mm. I didn't put all that dirt into mm. my wash water and I tell you what I ha only had to fill up that wash wash water mm. once when you do it correctly if mm. you do pre-wash with soiled clothing I never had to 
take mm. all the water out and put more in and you save all that mm. hot water and electricity oh, and yes. everything. And then I had it go into the, the rinse water and then it went, I double rinsed it. And then by the time it went out, it was gleaming clean oh, and yes. snapping in the wind. But isn't this funny? Here we are talking to you like this today, ladies, and it's most probably foreign. It probably is. <laughs> in fact, I wasn't Amish, but I still started off with my mm -hmm. children. Um, as I said, first five children, just putting everything, all my nappies, diapers, all my clothes through mm -hmm. the ringer. Yes. But actually, they were dangerous. Oh, you, you I know, had. I mean, I have nearly got caught many times. <laughs> <laughs> I never got caught, but I did one time. I did but nearly. The hose, the hose with the water, got. We, we had it in the house at one point. We weren't supposed to get any water on the floor. We were renting it, and one time the hose went, got sucked in there, and the water was going spraying all over the room, <laughs> and I didn't know because I thought, well, I was just gonna go get something else taken care of. <laughs> going and there was like a this much water on the floor i was walking through water <laughs> but actually talking about these old um you know ringer washing machines uh it reminds me of when i first started off with the children because this was the beginning perhaps really of above rubies because it's when my whole um outlook changed because i can remember one time I was just, I, I had three little babies in, in 17 months and I had no help. We'd just come back from the Philippine Islands doing missionary work there. And I, I, I could hardly keep awake and I was so tired and I didn't know how I could do it. And, oh, I did the most terrible thing. What did you do? Oh, I was at this washing machine <laughs> and I was putting the thing through the ring. It was about midnight. And I could hardly keep my eyes open. And I banged that jolly washing machine. And I said, I wish I'd never got married. Oh, can you believe it? <laughs> <laughs> but then my husband had been out at a meeting. And he walked in the door. And I was glad I had. <laughs> but it was from that time I began to cry out to God and say, Oh, God. Because, you see, we went out full time for God when we were engaged. Now... Suddenly, I'm home with three little babies, and my husband's still out doing the Lord's work. And I think, but I'm meant to be out changing the world too. Goodness <laughs> me, that's my life. That's what I want to do, change the world for God. Yes. And I think, oh God, forgive me. Was I not meant to get married? Sorry. Oh God, please help me. And it was in those days that the Lord began to show me that I was in his perfect will and that he had created me to be a mother. This mm -hmm. is who I was. Yes. This is how he created me physically, innately, mentally, in every way. Mm -hmm. And as he began to show this to me, in fact, it was that time. It was the first time in my life that I ever really embraced who I was as a female. I had always, I'd been such an adventurous young person. I always said, oh, the men had a better life. They did more adventure. I wish I was a man. <laughs> and that was so disgusting. But that's just how I thought. And, <laughs> until God had to show me. God oh. showed me. And that was the beginning of a whole change in my life. And then instead of surviving these days and getting through and how will I survive with these children and what a waste of my life, God began to show me this wasn't waste, this was his perfect will. Oh, and I began to so embrace good. motherhood. And as I embraced it, I began to lighten it, to live in the joy of it, to be fulfilled. Filled in it. That is such a good testimony. Because I'm at the old ring of washing machine. <laughs> well, you know, it could have been many years of despair for you. And when, of course, I'm looking back now, and I see more than ever, my, the greatest work that you can do in life, dear mothers, mm -hmm. is to embrace the children God wants you to have, and to, and to raise them, and and to pour. You, God into them and mm -hmm. his life and his ways and his truth and his word 
And now, of course, my children have grown. Not only have they grown, but they have their own children. Not only do they have their own, ch own their children, but they have their children. So <laughs> now I have, goodness, it's on the fourth generation. And I mean, when I look and see how they're impacting the world for God, I am multiplying my impact in the world. That's so I know amazing. that I am blessing the world and I'm blessing the world as a mother more than any other way I would have chosen of my own way. But then my whole ministry is multiplied through my family yes. because all my family are impacting the world. And so this is... This is, will be your testimony too, dear mm -hmm. mother, as you embrace it and do getting back to willingly, to even just just yes. willingly embracing the mundane tasks in your home and making your bed. And <laughs> you know got... what else is so amazing is I, I get up in the morning and I get excited about cooking and I get yes. excited about cleaning. Yes. I When the children are all off on their own things sometimes on a Saturday morning, it's my joy of my whole week. I love being with them. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, just being in this home and just cleaning every little nook and cranny and getting my sheets all mm -hmm. cleaned and, and just doing my laundry, doing everything around the house and making mm -hmm. a nice meal and lighting candles for when mm -hmm. everybody comes home and it smells so good in the house. Mm -hmm. I have all the windows open in the spring. Yes. And, oh, it just feels so good. And it's fun and I'm twirling. Literally, if you came in here and you were a fly on my wall, you would see me like twirling in the rooms because I'm. It's to me, it's like dancing. Yes. It's like celebrating. Yes. Well, and I, it's because, you know, now I can walk yes. and I'm just so thankful. And it's just, I feel like I'm praising God and I'm in exactly right where I'm supposed to be in the will of God. And it's the most, once you get that into your head, hmm. that this is the will of God and doing these sorts of mundane things, it, 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 it just opens your whole world to a whole new <clears throat> joy that you can hmm. experience. Yes, and it's all your attitude, mm -hmm. isn't it? It is so I mean, much your really, attitude. Um, mothering and homemaking is in it's really intrinsic in a woman. Mm -hmm. It's who we are. God mm -hmm. created us for the home mm -hmm. and to manage the home. That means keep it clean and organized. Uh, that's all part of homemaking. Now this is this is part of who we are. Now, many women don't feel like that. They think, oh, that's boring. I've got to get out and do something else. Um, but that's only because they've been brainwashed and indoctrinated and propagandized by our society today. And so mm -hmm. that has so changed their thinking. But if they were to just get rid of all that, you know, delusional junk, they would find that this is really what they want to do because this is where you're truly satisfied. And it's very relaxing once you just kind of fit into your role mm. and it's, it's, it's empowering. I mean, talk about, you know, there's feminists out there mm. and they've got this agenda like, oh, we can do everything. Mm. But it's, oh, it's talking, different, yes. feminism. Oh, goodness me. Now we're on to another subject because you mentioned that word. Now, just yesterday... I read an article, oh my, Ooh, can I share a little yes. bit of it with you? Actually, I posted it on my Facebook today, on Above Ruby's Facebook. If you're not on my Above Ruby's Facebook, you can go to it. In fact, I post an encouraging article for you every day to bless you as a mother and bless you as a wife but this wasn't encouraging but it's informative and i believe that it's something that we should be aware of and um it the heading of the article is called the darkness at the heart of radical feminism mm. it was actually talking about a book that is coming out no it is out now that is exposing feminism but in the book uh, this woman Carrie um, what is her name I think it's Car no I didn't even bring it here Carrie Gress um, mm. yes so anyway she writes this in the book can I just read it to yes, you because absolutely. it's so powerful and it shows us the root you mentioned because of feminism it's yeah. changed our thinking changed the way women live yeah. today do you want to know one of the roots of how it happened? Okay. It was 1969, 
And she took me to a meeting of a friend. This was her sister, the person writing this, at Leela Karp's place in Greenwich Village, Mallory explains. Actually, this is not the author, but she's talking about this woman. At a consciousness raising, an idea important from Mayo's China, 12 women gathered at a large table. They opened with a type of litany from the Catholic Church, but this time it was Marxism, the church of the left. Why are we here today, the chairwoman asked. To make a revolution, they answered. What kind of revolution, she replied. The cultural revolution, they shouted. And how do we make cultural revolution, she demanded. By destroying the American family, they answered. Wow. How do we destroy the family, she came back. By destroying the American patriarch. They cried exuberant, exuberantly. And how do we destroy the American patriarch, she probed. By taking away his power. How do we do that? By destroying monogamy, they shouted. How can we destroy monogamy? By promoting promiscuity, eroticism, prostitution, abortion, and homosexuality, mm -hmm. they resounded. Wow. Such antics might seem insignificant, except for the fact that these women achieved all their goals. Oh, I know. It's, nice it's interesting that every time I have been asked to do an interview on TV or radio by, you know, some talk show or someone like that, every time, do you know the subject they bring up? Every single time they bring up about the patriarch. Oh, and they've got this terrible understanding that the patriarch is someone who has his family in such, sub such subjection that they cannot even make a decision and, mm -hmm. and he is the most biggest ogre in the history of our nation. And, and so, you know, I would seek to disarm them. But, you know, that's how they have been indoctrinated. Mm -hmm. And when you see that, that was one of their... Uh, things to wipe out and to destroy patriarchy, which is the blessing of the father being the head of the family. Yes, but not to lord it over his family, but to protect his family and lead his family and to be a headship that his wife and his family yeah. can look up to. That mm -hmm. is also normal within right. us because it's God-like. God has put within us that desire to reverence and awe him, mm -hmm. to fear him, to be in awe of him. Mm -hmm. That's something in human nature. And we yeah. learn that in the practical way in revering um, the patriarch of the family. Right. That is not a terrible thing. No. It's a beautiful thing. It is thing. a beautiful thing. And, uh, <laughs> you know, when a man lives according to the Bible way, where he loves his wife as much as he does his own body, and he loves her like Christ loves the church, well, there can't be anything more glorious. Right. But you see, at the bottom of this, the root of this is Satan trying to destroy the family. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're seeing today. Now, women have been taking over more and more and more in society, putting the man down. Goodness me, what's he? He's hopeless. He's no good. And they are rising up and it's put distortion on the family, how it's meant to be. And of course, they're getting women out of the home. So they no longer are fulfilling right. this beautiful task of mothering and managing it. their homes and working willingly in their homes. Because no. Proverbs 31 that you write about yeah. in your book, it's not about her out in a career, it's about the home. Yes. The home. Absolutely. The home. Yes, let's get it. It's about the home. Oh, yes, I hear people say to me, oh, Nancy, but what about this woman? She was in real estate. No, she wasn't in real estate. She went out to purchase a vineyard, but she wasn't in full-time work at the office selling vineyards. No, no. she wasn't doing that. She, was doing she wasn't in real family. estate because that was normal. Look, if you've traveled to Europe, if you've traveled to Israel, you'll find that most homes have a vineyard. Even I've traveled to so many countries in Europe, and many of them, 
They've just got their vineyard some just near their say, home. And they've people. got all their wine in their oh. down in their basement. And, and this is how they live. And back then, having a vineyard was survival. And this woman was not actually, she was a little bit different to us. She was a very wealthy, wealthy woman who had servants. And she had a big household. And she needed a bigger vineyard to, as her family grew and her household grew, she needed to enlarge. Look, we're always enlarging. We enlarge, yeah. we enlarge. What all of us have been around looking at houses to choose another house we could live in or looking for land. Of course, that's part of home, finding a home. That's what she was doing. Yeah. Oh, so you had me. arguments with people that she was a real estate agent? Oh, I've had people say that. <laughs> I never they, even they thought try, of that. Well, they're trying I to never find, even thought of it. They've got to try and find some biblical, biblical excuse for what they're doing. So they use. The, oh, I see it all over the. Um, I see it all over social media all the time. People praising a woman who like works full time as a Proverbs thirty one woman. Like she's made it to the top of a company or something like she's a proverbs 31 woman no she was in the home of course she was because she and was all off doing all these meetings and all this stuff and she's mm -hmm. now this proverbs 31 woman i'm always like I don't know. It's not. No, no. <laughs> this woman, she did have industry in the home. Yes, yeah, she right. did. Yeah. But um, she had lots of servants too. And they were working in the home. And I think that's great. If you have, um, you know, if you have wealth that you can have people. Actually, oh, we were just out it. Oh, yes. We went out to meet some folk the other night. And we've known of this family for so long, a very wonderful family. But it was our first time to meet them, the Botkin family. Have you heard of them? And then there's the Botkin sisters who wrote that book so much more. And um, anyway, uh, we went out to their home and had the most lovely fellowship. But um, just not too long ago, one of their sons uh, got into guns and then he invented a holster oh. it's an amazing holster which you have in the front of you and you can't be seen under your shirt and it, it can fit the whole the gun and the magazine and it is the best in the world and now all the military in this country are wanting it and overseas what and oh yes and it's becoming so popular that this little invention is now becoming a huge business Wow. And so, of course, they've got the whole family working with them, you know, they're right there in the home, well, just right adjacent, you know, everything's sort of part of their community. But now it's getting so big that they're going to have to go in and find a big manufacturing building to do it because it's just exploding. But, you know, uh, this is family businesses can be wonderful when you're oh, yeah. all working together. And she was had a family business. Mm -hmm. And, um, of course, you're not going to do that unless your husband is doing it. Um, you know, often husbands have family businesses and children grow up into them, which is all wonderful. And that used to be how life was. But, of course, the mother, uh, she will get involved in different seasons of her life. But when she, you have little ones, that's your... I find, okay, that's, that takes your whole life. If yeah. you're going to start something like this, wait for the right season. Right. But it can be right very season. much part of family life. Absolutely. I notice now with Trim Healthy Mama, you know, Serene and Pearl, my daughters, who they wrote this book, and now, of course, it's an exploding, mm -hmm. exploding business. It's amazing how God just touches some things and they begin to explode. But, you know, I look at Serene. She has 14 children, a little baby. Her life is in the home. That's her favorite place to be. Of course, she has to pop over to the to the potty room to do her potty, and she does. Um, you know, they do their filming, but it's all just around our homes. And um, but they have just given over to their husbands the run of the whole business. They, you ask Serena, oh, how's true healthy mama going? Well, don't ask me. She doesn't know one thing about the business. She wouldn't know one thing about the business. <laughs> Um, and so, so their husbands do that. But it's marvellous because they, as they have growing children, I mean, they are all getting involved in different yeah, areas, which are so jobs. powerful, you know, yeah, and, so and into very, um, really, not just little boring jobs, but amazing jobs. So uh, mm -hmm. family businesses can do that. Yeah, we've always had family businesses, and mm -hmm. we've really thrived with those. And 
for years, Mark was making those drying racks, and we had a homesteading store. Oh, so and we he had... actually made mm -hmm. them. He did, yes. and he had all the boys out there drilling the holes, and the girls were, you know, helping around the house with me and doing our laundry and, and cooking and cleaning. And now the girls, now we have our business is starting to take off. Now we're doing um, different homesteading things again, and and herbs and all our different little concoctions we've always yes. come up with over the years and then now the girls are doing a cookbook together mm. and uh with me and we're enjoying that they're cooking up a storm every day yes it's always smelling so yes, nice it's, it's just, just lovely to be at your place eating all this oh stuff. but then you get gonna get fat <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> no, no, no. no but, it's, it's um, all healthy <laughs> cooking all i think we scratch. have to realize because mm -hmm. um, lots of you are listening today, some, you're all in different seasons, aren't you? Some are in the season of, mm. you've got a little baby and you've got little ones around you. Oh, darling mothers, embrace the season. It goes too quickly. It's, oh, it's gone before fast. you can say, Jack Robinson, please don't even try to do anything else. Just do the season. But there comes a time when these little children, even if the Lord adds more children, you have more little ones coming on, but you have big ones growing up. Mm -hmm. And when you have big ones growing up, you know, it's a season and you are able to maybe, because a lot of women find they are very gifted and they can create this. And then they find, oh, wow, well, I can bless my family with this. I can, you know, make a web page, put it online and sell it, you know. Yes. And so you can... You know, in the season, yes. as your children are growing and getting bigger, you can then do things like that. But, but, can I pop in a little thing? Yes. Because I was just reading, just the other day, in my daily reading as I have each morning. Mm -hmm. And of course, when I read the Word, well, I write what God is saying to me in a book. And I am currently studying... Um, about all the good things God wants us to do, and it's amazing. But one of the good things, and this really spoke to me, and let's see where it is. <laughs> Let me find it. I think it might be this one. Yes, here it is. It is good to use our gifts because God gives us all yes, he does. different gifts. Some he gives more than others. Yeah. I mean, I think you were the one who got a whole, you know, <laughs> whole lot of gifts. But well, then you, of course, have more responsibility. Because remember, yeah. the one who got all those gifts, he went and made more, you know. I know. And the one who only Too got... Too much is given, much is required. Exactly. <laughs> and the one who got one, he thought, oh, what's, I'm hopeless, I've just got one, so he buried it. But God wasn't pleased with him. He wants us to multiply our gifts, doesn't he? But anyway, 1 Peter 4.10. As every man hath received the gift, remember, God gives us the gifts. It's not us, it's him. Even so, minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Can I read it in a more modern translation? Um, the Amplified says, Just as each one of you has received a special gift, a spiritual talent, an ability graciously given by God, employ it in serving one another, as is appropriate for good stewards, faithfully using the diverse gifts and abilities given to you. Um, the New Living Translation says to use them well, to serve one another, and I was thinking, yes, firstly, God gives us these gifts so that we can use them to bless our family with provision. Um, we can even have a family business and so on. But I think we always have to be careful that we don't think that everything has to be done for money. Because what does that scripture say? Mm -hmm. It says, employ the gifts that God has given you to serve one another. And I think there are often gifts that we have that we will use not to get any money, not to get anything, just to bless others. Right. You know, I've had some people say to me, well, they're 
call in or they've emailed me and say, um, Nancy, I've written this poem. Would you like to um, print it in Above Rubies? Well, if I was to print all the poems that have been sent to me, <laughs> I would have Too hundreds many. of issues of just poems. Right. And I usually will use them just to fill in a little space. And so it takes me time to, you know, eventually get to a little poem I can put in a space. But I will say to these women, thank you so much. And I will use it maybe when I can get a chance to do so. But don't wait or don't write just to be published. No, write to bless people. If you mm -hmm. have a gift to write poems, buy some beautiful cards. Ask the Lord to just show you people who need encouraging, need blessing, need uplifting. And you can ask the Lord for a poem for them, to write about them and how, what you see in their lives and just lift them up and encourage them and then send it to them in the post. That's often more lovely than just an email, although you may email it to them. But you see, you can do things yeah, like that. Sometimes that. people want to do it big, they want to do it for money, and they forget, oh, this gift God gave me is just to serve someone, yes. to bless them. So Absolutely. I think we have to remember, yes, yes, we do use our gifts to provide for our families, but there will also be gifts that we use or we'll use that also to bless and serve others as well because so that's what the bible says so that's why i love the word because it keeps us in check it, it speaks to does. me it gets keeps, keeps me on the right keeps, track keeps us on the straight and narrow it as does. women yes. and we were also going to talk about oh, the a worker oh yes in fact, we haven't even talked about more about willingly yet, but we'll do more of that. Willingly, next. yes. But we can, of course, um, let's see. Oh, yes. Anyway, even those are good, aren't they? We'll read oh, yeah. alternately these and then we'll get on to that one. Okay. Okay, so in chapter 8 of Living Virtuously, I went over the four different worker types because there are four different, there's A workers, B workers, C workers, and D workers. So Maybe we could just go on to them. Yeah. A workers and Shall D we? Well, this is the A worker. No, this is your oh. A worker. Oh, it is. <laughs> oh, no. There it okay, is. Okay, here it is. Yes. <laughs> See, she knows my book better than I do. <laughs> I read it this morning. <laughs> oh. All right. Well, this is of fun. This chapter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, of course. Mm -hmm. So the A worker is someone that sees what needs to be done and does it. And the B worker. Oh, the B worker asks for work. Now, what can I do next? And then the C worker has, has to, to be, be told, told to work. work. And the D yeah. worker avoids work. Yeah, I can't mm. even find them. <laughs> so yeah, we um I I I always believed this. I saw it first on a it was a video that Ken Tobin put together years and years oh, ago. Did he write about it? Or well, talk he, about it? He didn't call him, I don't think it was A workers. Because I've heard about these, the A, B, and C workers, you know, mm -hmm. D workers. He did, um, he had a little video that you can watch on YouTube, and he talked about um, different classes of, or mm -hmm. types of workers, mm -hmm. like a, um, a type worker that he would, he actually put a $20 bill in a, in a can, <coughs> like a soda can crumpled up on the floor and see if anybody was an A worker and everybody just walked right past it even though it was right in the middle of the path that they had to walk through to come to his meeting. Isn't that amazing? And he stuck the money in there just to see if somebody would pick and it up. And nobody got it? Nope. Can you believe He went it? out there in the hallway, it was at a high school, went out there in the hallway and he picked it up and he said nobody even thought to pick it up. <laughs> so I was... um. I was raised by both of my parents are A workers and they taught me so they used to say I was lazy when I was a little girl and I would throw everything under the bed and my parents <laughs> actually taught me to be an A worker mm -hmm. because I wasn't allowed to be lazy mm -hmm. and so they would really get on me if I would walk over a mess and eventually I started to see the messes and I would go and pick them mm -hmm. up and now 
I noticed everything, mm -hmm. even every little fur ball on the floor or mm -hmm. little crumb. It's like screaming at me. Mm -hmm. Like I have to go and pick it up. It, it drives me crazy just to see something that's undone or cluttered mm -hmm. or not finished. So I became an A worker by um, just by training. So mm -hmm. we can all train ourselves to be an A worker. And what is an A worker? We can, we'll go through these points here. Okay, and we can chat about them. Yeah. The A worker does not have to be told what to do. They have the ability to see what needs to be done and they take the initiative to get the job done. They work on every task until it is complete. If an A worker is walking in a parking lot, you will see them reach down to pick up a piece of trash they find on the ground. This type of person is not put off by the fact that someone else was lazy enough to leave it there, they just see that it needs to be picked up. <laughs> and do you do you ever when you have the above Ruby's girls, mm -hmm. do you ever get ones that are A workers? I had the most diligent workers. Um, Colin and I always say that we have the cream of the earth who come to us. But I think that A workers, there are very few around. I always, I mm. also, because my workers always work so diligently yes. and so willingly and so smilingly and, and joyfully. joyfully. And, uh, you know, you can't, mm -hmm. you could never ever fault them. But it is, it, sadly, it's quite rare to get these A workers, and I often call them second milers, wow. who are prepared to go the second mile. Wow. I remember one girl we had one time. Um, I had a, I can't even remember exactly what the problem was. It's something to do with uh, sending out the new issue of Above Rubies with our um, database. And um, something went wrong and our webmaster said, look, this will all have to be done manually. I think we could work it now, but this was a few years ago. And it all had to be done manually and it had to be done quick. And you know, it, it was going to just take time. Well, this girl, without my asking, she didn't just keep to the times like we usually work. We start at nine and we finish at five with our hour for lunch. No, she, she would just work on and on into the night. Really? And she'd work through her lunchtime. And she didn't stop, just except to get enough hours of sleep until that job was completed. I didn't wow. ask her to do that. I, wow. I could not expect her to do more than, you know, the times that we have. But she was a second miler. Wow. She that's went amazing. beyond uh, the normal. And that's an A worker too. That's yeah. someone who sees what needs to be done and doesn't think, oh, well, we'll eventually get it done in our time, a lot of times. No, mm -hmm. she knew it was urgent and she sacrificed. Mm -hmm. And she poured in those hours. And <laughs> I, I was so impressed. I think that, is, that was that's a really beautiful neat. testimony. That showed something of incredible character in that girl. Yeah, know? it really, it does make an impression on people. And yes. those are the types of people that end up getting the raises and more opportunities because they... Well, exactly, they really, exactly. Because, I mean, who can find somebody like that? I mean, I when know. I used to be, have babysitting jobs, when I was a, like from ages 10 or 12 till I got married, I would babysit for people. And I remember when I didn't even have a driver's license and I remember babysitting for people and they would have their house just turned upside down, completely trashed. Dishes like loaded this high up on the countertops. You could just see dishes for miles and miles in the house and then just clutter and garbage and oh. floors never got scrubbed and the bathrooms were all free, full of urine and yucky and just disgusting. And I found it my greatest delight to have that house completely mastered before they came home. Even if they were gone for four hours, I would work my tail off mm -hmm. and I would scrub every dish and put it away and dry, put it away. I would scrub every floor while I was watching the children and cooking the food and cleaning mm. all them and giving their baths, putting them to bed. And when they come home, they'd be like, <laughs> they couldn't believe be that the house. Time. <laughs> so then the word got out and then everybody wanted me to babysit. So I got to pick and choose which ones. No, no, and no. I tell you what, I knew which ones 
yes. were the ones that would leave the messes for me on purpose so after a while. So you didn't have them. You didn't, no. Didn't choose them. Because I would be like, no, no, see, I'm trying to be no. nice, and I'm not getting paid extra, and I don't no, even want to get paid extra. No, that's just used. Yeah. Used and abused. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I got myself into situations like that, but yes. yeah. I remember the story of, of, of my eldest son, who he owns the Newsboys, but he owns many, many companies. And uh, there was a guy who wanted to work for him, and he said, no, I don't need you. And uh, he said, look, I'll come and work for you free. And, oh, okay. So this man came and worked for him free for a while. This man today is his right-hand man. He, he, my son wouldn't know anything without this man. He, yeah. he became so necessary to his life by his lifestyle and his work ethic that now, and he's paid big bucks, you know. And, and so he ended up with this most amazing, amazing, amazing job yeah. and uh, lucrative job because he was a man who was prepared to go the second mile. That's you amazing. Know? That's so yes. good. I know that I've always recommended to my children who say, you know, I really wish I could get this job. And I say, if they don't have an opening, you present them with free labor. It works yes. every time. If, you, I, if you're enthusiastic mm -hmm. and you are willing to work for somebody for free mm -hmm. and you're going to do it like you're getting paid a million dollars an hour mm -hmm. and you're going to do it to the best of your ability, that speaks louder than, oh, yes. <laughs> than words. It speaks louder than mm -hmm. anything you could have, a resume. Mm -hmm. And as you see, mm -hmm. um, proof. bee workers are so diligent and wonderful oh, yeah. and keep to time. But the A workers and the second milers, they don't do that. They are always there at least five minutes before, waiting for the door to open. Uh, and they, they are there after. afterwards. Mm -hmm. They would never, oh, it's five o'clock, got to go. No, they, they stay just get longer. It finished. Oh, yeah. they'll, even if there's something urgent, they'll stay till mm -hmm. it's done. I know. Where do you find these people today? Just, but hard. This is what you yeah. know, we're talking about. Yes, this is and this is exactly. what we have got to be. So we empower yeah. to our children. Uh -huh. Do we want them to be successful? Do we want them to to <laughs> to grow up and have wonderful careers? I tell you what, well, we've got to teach them the way it happens. It doesn't just fall on their lap. You've got to work. You have yeah. to work to make it happen. Right. You know. Absolutely. Now the second point: the A worker will look around a room and see things out of place. And they will take the few seconds to set things right, whether it be a decorative pillow laying on the floor or a pencil sitting on the table. The A wor worker will see to it that things are put where they belong. Mm -hmm. And you want to read so the next good. one? Yes. A workers do not leave a trail behind them. <laughs> After they have finished eating, they make sure to pick up their plates and fork and rinse them off and clean up any mess that was made by them. They would be horrified to have someone else clean up after them. How embarrassing. I've known a lot of people like that. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Like even for school. Oh, man, you should see the table. I've, I had to embarrass one of my students. I had to start taking pictures and sending them publicly to the group chat for my homeschool students so that they could actually be forced to be embarrassed about leaving stuff for me to clean up. Why should I have to clean up after them? They should know better. They should pick up their things, not expect everybody to clean up after them. So the next one is, the, init the inventive A worker does not need to be told to work. They find work. Mm -hmm. They would sooner die than have someone ever tell them what they should have done or how to do the work better. These are your CEOs of companies, your entrepreneurs and inventors. They make things better. If there's a problem, they will figure out a way to fix that problem. Good stuff, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, all the other types of workers pay the A worker. Mm -hmm. Yes, they never t um, lack for work because they see the needs of others. They make a difference in society by taking action. They're not bench warmers in church. They are actively helping minister to others with the gospel, cleaning the church, doing whatever needs doing. Wow. 
the A worker usually makes enough money to be more giving in the ministry. Mm -hmm. Which is so true. Mm -hmm. Do we yeah. do we have a lot of willing people doing the church, uh, cleaning up the home church fellowship? Mm. Sometimes we have to, you and I have to round them up. <laughs> yes. Well, this is the thing. Young people are so, um, yeah. just so happy to be with one another and yeah. you know fellowship together and you love them doing that. It's so great. But she but sometimes you have to remind them. Come on, she has the clean church. Up. She has our home fellowship at her home. And she's such a testimony. Like, it, I, I'm always in awe of her energy. She's up and around and chasing back and forth and putting the bread in the oven and putting this in the oven and putting that in the oven and putting the forks and spoons and knives out and making sure the table is all ready to go so so that by the time somebody prays for the food, it's everybody can get in line and get their plates full. Mm -hmm. And she organizes all of it. And she has it at her house and she's just always doing it so willingly. It's such a testimony to all of us other women, you know, we, we kind of don't want to get in our way sometimes, but we're all there, like, or I'm always there trying to figure out what can I do next? Can I slice a bread for you or can I... Just... Oh, we usually have fights to see who's going to slice it. I know, we do. <laughs> yes, this is the fun. Would you... uh -huh. Actually, I was just brought up in a home where mm -hmm. work was never a drudgery. My father loved work. I mean... Work. He he was never happier mm -hmm. than when he was working, and, mm -hmm. and we just we grew up just realizing that work was never a chore, was never a drudgery. Mm -hmm. Work was wonderful, and I I guess that is my confession. I love work. I mean, yeah. I'd much rather be doing something uh, than just sitting and letting someone else do it. That's yep. so boring, yes. isn't it? You yeah. know, but anyway, our time has gone again. Can you what, believe what it? Time is it's it? just on three. Oh, yes. We could do these okay. two little we'll ones. And we're done. <clears throat> okay, being an A <clears throat> worker can be built into certain personalities, but it can also be a learned behavior. Yes. Yep. We have to teach. Well, I yeah. think it's more than teach it to our children. It's kind of remind them every day. Well, it kind of <laughs> it builds it bit. into them. It does. Little by little, line upon line, precept, precept upon precept. precept. It's just mm -hmm. every day, you know. Um, we have some young um, boys staying at our home at the moment. And, and uh, anyway, they came back at lunchtime. And I said, hey, boys, did you make your beds this morning? No. And um, so one said, oh, you know, I, I, I don't like, I like to just get into a bed that just looks as though it's ready to get into. I said, oh, no, not in this house. <laughs> Go into your room and make your beds because this is what we do in our house. Every morning you make your bed before you come out of the room. Yep, so they're going to learn a lot. They're going to learn to be <laughs> A workers by the time they're done living at your house. Yes, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what we yes. hope as parents and most most um, parents are aid workers. They have to be. Yes. Because they have to, like, you have to see to, you, you know, you, you have you to become, make the meals. Yes. You In have, fact, to, you have to clean the house. And a mother, you, you, you do become you an aid worker, don't you? You do have to become you? that way because there's yes. no way around it. I know. <laughs> so, you got to do yep. it with the right attitude. Mm -hmm. Willingly. That means with pleasure, with delight, with purpose, with joy. Hallelujah. Yes. <laughs> Let's pray, shall we? Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord God, we thank you that we can talk together about uh, the, the things that are real life. Mm -hmm. Lord, they're not things that are just not real. They're what we face every day. And we pray that you'll help us to be truly willing workers who do everything with delight and joy. Because, Lord, our children, we, we, we train them a lot more often by what they see in us than what we tell them. Mm -hmm. And so we pray that we will be examples to them. Help us to be second milers and to train children who are not the average, but who are second milers. Mm -hmm. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you all Amen. for joining us again. And just a little quick announcement. All of these videos are being uploaded to YouTube. Amen. So they're able to be shared on any of your pages if you want to. Or if you find them encouraging, please share. Please subscribe to my YouTube because it'll keep you informed to when we have other videos coming up. And here's the fun thing. All the old 
the videos that we already filmed, mm -hmm. the healing home mm -hmm. and the pillars, all of those are going to be on there as well. That's I just have to great. keep um, uploading them, but eventually mm -hmm. it's just an automatic process. So today it'll just automatically go up on YouTube. So that's exciting. That's great. We can reach more people. And mm -hmm. even one time we had somebody uh, reach back out to at, out to us after they watched the video, and and they um, it like changed their life. So I'm mm -hmm. I'm excited about that. It's more than just people that are Christians that are watching it. There's all people all around the world watching it. So we're excited to, to know that God's word is getting out there and, mm -hmm. and just over a cup of tea. Yes. So cheers. Bless you. Bless you. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>